Alison McAllister, everybody. Nice to be here in Toronto. Long time no see. Been a while. Friendly town. I got out of the car from Kitchener, Waterloo, and I'm traveling with Gromit. I uh, yeah, looked first person. I said, excuse me, if you uh, know if there's any grass around. He goes, no, I don't got none, but uh, I got a one-hitter if you need it. <laughs> Pretty friendly town. I like that. You know, they say that it's the THC in marijuana that uh, makes you paranoid, but for me, it's still the cops. <laughs> I think it's just a trick they're going to legalize this, but you know, when they do, it's not going to drastically change my lifestyle. <clears throat> However, when they change the, the laws around prostitution, that might change my lifestyle a little bit. <laughs> Last time I was down here at Absolute Comedy, I got myself in a little bit of trouble. After a show, I was just standing around minding my own business when a copper rolled up on me. I'm like, what's up, my papa pig Now, I don't stutter, but I want to make sure you heard exactly what I said. And before you start thinking some kind of racial thing, let me just say that all those black, white, Asian, Latinos, they all look the same to me. It's not racial at all. So like I said, I said, how can I help you, officer? <laughs> she said, hey, you can't pee on City Hall. Well, your mayor did, no. <laughs> I said, excuse me, officer, I'm blind, drunk, just a little lost. She goes, I can see that. Why are you naked? Oh, shit. <laughs> Please welcome my guide dog, Grama, to the stage. You guys think he's cute? Yeah. Um, he is really cute. I was worried about that. I mean, we're blind, right? He uh, to give us all the ugly dogs and keep the good looking ones for other services. <laughs> I'm not sure if he likes stand up comedy. It makes me nervous. He always tries to take me the other way. He's like, I don't think you're very good at it, Kenny, because they keep laughing at us. <laughs> makes me nervous. But uh, he's been absolutely aw aw awesome. I uh, got him from, uh, believe it or not, like being like a nearly perfect dog. I think I got like $70,000 in them. He's a nearly perfect dog, but he's actually a rescue. Yeah, that's cute, right? Eh? I got him from Guide Dogs of the Blind in California, which means I rescued him from President Trump's America. <laughs> <laughs> he's been awesome for my independence. One of the first things he did was taught me how to lick myself. <laughs> Can't tell you how liberating that's been. <laughs> Had him two and a half years, and ever since, I'm doing everything doggy style. Pretty good way to do things, if you ask me. <laughs> Uh, we went for a three-hour walk the other day. I, of course, did not want to go for a three-hour walk. <laughs> He's the guide. I follow the guide dog. And he needed to pick something up at the pet store. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Uh, it's a really smart dog, which does not mean he's got Wi-Fi or charges himself. Or <laughs> um, he is a bit of artificial intelligence. He's amazing. I can take him to a place a couple times, and he gets it. So I'm like, you know, Grom would take me to Tim Hortons. And a couple weeks ago, we had a snowstorm. I don't have to say it was a blinding snowstorm, right? Right? <laughs> so I just hold on to him and walking across uh, intersection after intersection over snow, four foot snow banks. And like 10, 15 minutes later, miraculously end up right at the frickin' pet store. <laughs> he has been cool. I uh, love having him around. Uh, people ask, you know, talk about service dogs, helper dogs. I had a client that asked me, like, why I didn't get a blind dog before? I'm oh, blind dog, that's pretty cute. <laughs> Honestly, I didn't think a blind dog would help. <laughs> uh, sad story, not people are allowed to know this, but I did have a dog before, Gromit. However, I let him out to go pee, and I haven't seen him ever since. <laughs> sure, I went looking for him. I'm like, excuse me, here, buddy, here, buddy. Excuse me, have you seen my dog? I don't know, what's he look like? Oh, shit. I don't know, he's uh, furry. Um, that's uh, not even funny. I, I'd hate to lose Grom, and he's uh, by far the best German Shepherd I ever met. So, <laughs> I love hanging out with him because my, my dog, my cane had no intelligence at all. Uh, you guys have those blind beeper traffic lights, right? You know what I'm talking about? You start out, they start out pretty good. They're like beep, 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 beep. But halfway across, next time you pay attention, it's halfway across, they start going, uh-oh, uh-oh. <laughs> and you know, people yelling, watch out, isn't as helpful as you think it should be. 
And I loved using my cane because when people hold the door open for me and they would, once in a while, they wouldn't say anything, kind of freaked me out. So I'd accidentally whack them with my stick. And they'd apologize to me, which I thought was kind of cool. But even better than that is when parents tell their kids to get out of my way and I'd accidentally stomp on them. Because first they'd cry and then they'd get yelled at. <laughs> Uh, I shouldn't do it though. I love kids. It's so sweet and innocent. They look up and say, Hey, mister, what's wrong with your eyes? How come you're not looking at me? Because you are fucking ugly. <laughs> so, um, I guess you know, I do get a lot of questions about my sight. Uh, for the record, I was legally blind at the age of nine. I did not masturbate until I was 13, so they're not related. I don't care what anybody has told you. <laughs> I'd like to tell you about the sports I played as a child, but my parents made me play the piano. Call me Little Stevie. That's when I realized the whole world's gonna treat me different just because I'm black. <laughs> I did play sports, as a matter of fact, I got a second degree black belt in Shotokan Karate, which is worth applauding for. It wasn't easy. It was cool. But this is even cooler than that. I was, uh, for a period of 10 years, but five for sure. I was North America's only totally blind downhill ski racer. Uh, that's true. Well, the only one I ever saw, anyways. <laughs> and if you're wondering why I did it, that's another talk for like Bell Talk Day. But if you're wondering how I did it, I had a megaphone on my guide's back, and we would use a series of audible tones. Found sounds like crash, bang, boom. <laughs> guide me relatively safely down the Rocky Mountains. <laughs> I wish I was kidding about that, but uh, you guys ever watch The Price is Right? Yep. Blind ski race is a whole lot like Plinko. They drop the blind guy at the top and watch him bounce through all the sticks just to see where he turns up at the bottom. <laughs> I only mention this because the um, Paralympics are coming up in uh, just a couple weeks, and uh, Olympics, Paralympics, Chinese are always saying that uh, they, they get the most medals, they take home the most medals, which makes sense for me because they make them. <laughs> And it was like, I'm gonna get going, guys, but uh, do all you can. I, I swear, like, um, you know, like I was white water kayaking, uh, rock, rock climbing, uh, snowboarding, which was like a four hour car accident, uh, stand up comedy, obviously. Um, try and get and stay fit, it matters. Uh, take me for an example, I work hard for it, but I'm 48 years old, I got the body of a 35 year old. She's 150 bucks an hour, but it's well worth it. Please welcome back Alistair McAllister. <laughs> And thank you all for supporting live comedy.